Okay, let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, we can. All right, perfect. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, today we are talking about design thinking 101 for um, human resources. Um, uh, so all of you must have heard about design thinking as such. It's a, it's a, it's a term that's going around in the industry for some time. Um, today, um, innovation is everyone's business. And, um, and whatever level you are at, it's something that's really needed uh, in today's world. Whether you're a manager, an architect, a human resource professional, a developer, designer, an entrepreneur, um, or you're starting up your business, uh, if you're a teacher, doesn't matter. Um, to do better with less is what design thinking is all about. It's all about lean. Uh, you must. Uh, some of you must have heard about lean practice, um, which essentially is around better with less effort and time. Um, and that is why we all need design thinking. At every level, uh, in every kind of organization, uh, design thinking provides the tools you need to become an innovate um, um, as a thinker and uncover creative opportunities that are there. Uh, you're just not seeing them yet. So it really helps us to uncover some of the things that are hidden um, behind uh, the way. Uh, and it really helps us look at things uh, the way we should look at them in order to innovate, in order to succeed. Uh, this, these few, uh, so we have two sessions uh, planned. Uh, these sessions um, are really about getting to let you know around what design thinking is. And in the second session, we would really cover some of the tools that you can use in your day-to-day -day lives uh, in order to incorporate design thinking in your, uh, in your, in your work. Uh, this is going to be, uh, so design thinking is all about fun and fast experience, learning about uh, the whole uh, framework. It's a creative and systematic approach uh, for solving challenging problems. In these sessions, uh, we provide an overview of design thinking and work with a model containing four key questions to help you understand design thinking as a problem-solving approach. You'll hear stories of design thinking in action, uh, learn about uh, design thinking tools, consider um, things around your mindsets, and think about quick and simple ways to test the innovation, innovative solutions using the design thinking um, uh, techniques. So uh, in these sessions, we will consider uh, discussions and opportunities around uh, design thinking, uh, preparing your mind for innovation, idea generation, experimentation, um, et cetera. All right. Uh, Paramita just introduced me. Uh, I am Gaurav. Uh, I've been in Learning Mate for almost 12 years now. Uh, I'm AVP for CMS and UX and a design thinking practitioner. I've run around 40 plus design sprints, uh, lightning decision jams, uh, conducted more than 100 plus interviews with users, uh, then usability testing, uh, things around uh, that you see as uh, design thinking uh, solutions. All right. So, uh, and and just before I start, uh, anyone has any questions or um, this, this needs to be more interactive rather than me just talking. So if you have anything, just put them on, put it on the chat. Uh, I'll try and answer your questions. If not, then towards the end, we can, we can have some time and uh, go through your questions, all right? So you must have, uh, been in the situation where you're frustrated with something that you thought could be designed better, right? Design thinking will show you how to structure your natural creativity uh, to come up with solutions to all kinds of problems and have fun in the process too. Uh, one of the things that we need to keep in mind, all of us are designers. We design something or the other. We design the onboarding process or we have designed uh, the, the processes on InfoWeb or we've designed um, uh, the the life or, or the journey of a of an employee in learning mate right from the day he joins to the day he leaves right all of these are things that we've designed as as human resources uh, human resource uh, professionals so don't think of this as somebody like a UX designer or a UI designer is 
going to get benefit out of uh, design thinking, uh, you would see some of these things that you can incorporate in your day-to-day -day lives. All right. So <clears throat> you must be thinking, what would I get uh, after completing these two sessions? Uh, you'll have awareness around how design thinking can be applied in a wide range of contexts, um, specifically around um, HR processes, um, from personal to global. Uh, investigate and think creatively about design problems and opportunities. Um, initiate an attitude of playfulness uh, to aid design thinking. Develop visual literacy, which is very important these days because everyone needs to see things visually. Uh, and you would learn things that are around articulating um, um, the way you are thinking uh, in, in more visual manner and explain the design decisions that you've taken. Use computing tools um, and online environments to aid design thinking as well. All right. So what are you, what are we really talking about? Design thinking, uh, it's always felt as a, um, as something that is trying to describe what I do for a living, right? So design is something uh, what I associate with very personally. Uh, calling myself as a designer frequently results in misunderstanding that my job is to make software products look pretty um, at Learning Made. On the other hand, uh, venturing uh, to call myself a design leader or a design strategist frequently garners a look of confusion at people's uh, uh, faces, right? Especially in those outside the technology and design industry uh, or division at Learning Mate, people think, what exactly am I talking about? Even when speaking with others uh, within the industry, um, a truly aligned understanding of design role is rare. So let's first understand what design is, right? So every company, every team, has their own understanding of what design is, or what the role of designer should be, and who exactly is a designer. Within user experience field, uh, there are so many specializations uh, within design roles, like interaction designer, or visual designer, or an information architect, motion designer, et cetera, et cetera. And these roles can, be, can have overlaps with other domains, such as marketing, and human resource, and architecture, and industrial design, and so on and so forth. To add to the confusion, no matter what the mix of the role or roles on a team, uh, design as a discipline itself can be a varying uh, at, can be at varying levels of maturity within organizations. Some teams might be playing more of a service role, uh, which is where uh, HR gets involved uh, primarily, and finding to fight fighting to fight a seat uh, at a strategic strategic table. On the other hand, some companies have jazzy roles like chief design officers and deeply embedded design teams that contribute at the highest level of business and product and strategy. The understanding of what design is can really vary across companies, organization, teams, uh, locations. Uh, design is no longer seen as just crafting user interface elements or even producing products or experiences. There is a broader understanding in the industry today that design can influence the experience of a user, in our case, people, uh, um, of, uh, of, of various touch point, at various touch points with the company. Ultimately, all these touch points and experiences culminate in a overarching perception of the company's values and its brand. And design impacts at all these levels. The focus has shifted today, and we have gone from uh, the idea that designers simply create usable components and product designs to understanding uh, that their work impacts the perception of entire brand, a company, and a customer experience. Right. So think about it. It is verb as well as noun. So it is all about doing things uh, in a certain way, and also what uh, and why. So design uh, isn't just about making things look appealing or just about usability or um, creating processes that work. It's, it is also about taking 
processes, products, experiences from being usable to delightful and then beyond that, uh, which is to be meaningful. Design is a way for us to deliver deep meaning to our customers uh, through the experiences we craft. Um, and in our case, customers are the employees, right? Uh, we must strive to elevate um, the value we deliver to our people from a basic functional one to the one that goes much beyond. So design needs to be not only delivering pleasure and delight, but also must deliver a deep meaning that we know people uh, that are seeking it. All right, so <clears throat> now we come to um, meaning needs to be part of the core of intent of everything, right? So essentially, whatever we work at needs to have a reason behind it, needs to have a meaning. So everything that we uh, work on on a day-to-day -day basis, anything that we design, any new process that we come up with, any new policy that we design, right? Everything needs um, uh, to embody the core meaning of uh, the user that that are seeking it. Delivering meaning cannot be an afterthought. Uh, the desire to do so uh, needs to be deeply embedded uh, in a company's culture. Uh, it's mission, it's strategy, and the core value of its employees. Meaning needs to be part of the core intent of the organization. It needs to be part of the core intent of anything that we um, design. Designing for meaning um, is not only beneficial to the end users, but also key for business success, for group success. Delivering experiences to people uh, that get the core of what uh, really value means uh, that they will identify more deeply with the company and form stronger bond with, with the organization, which is somewhere we call as brand loyalty and advocacy. Um, and it would be higher with the people um, and will have deeper engagement uh, with, with the organization. Uh, this will in turn lead to higher use, higher retention, rather than brief transactional interactions with the organization or the product or the brand or the process that we are uh, building. Uh, the interaction will be much deeper and long lasting because we have kept uh, the people in the center or the users in the center in, in design thinking terminology. Um, so the meaning is the guiding and the driving force uh, within each of the uh, within each of us right for whatever we do uh, it's what helps us value ourselves uh, and the products and the companies and the processes and the policies we interact with delivering meaning through experiences create a deep bond with our with the people that we work with it alleviates design uh, to the higher level of maturity and it helps deliver positive business outcomes, right? So no matter what the industry is, no matter what the division is, no matter what the group is um, that we belong to, whether we create products or services or tools or policies or products, whether we have an enterprise or, uh, or a consumer focus, no matter what our role is, we have an opportunity to drive successful business results in the way um, that also impacts people's lives, right? So let's dig a little bit around what design is, right? And then we talk about thinking. So we've, we've broken this into two words, design and thinking. Uh, almost everything that you see around you um, is designed by somebody, right? Uh, that it is uh, anything that exists um, as a result of human thought about what is needed. Um, if you sit in your office, uh, you see a telephone, you see a cup, you see a desk light, a building opposite your window or behind you, right? A computer in front of you, a chair, a software that runs a, uh, on it, uh, a platform like InfoWeb that you sign in every day, uh, the process uh, that drives InfoWeb in the background, the business uh, rules, the intelligence, everything is designed. These are obvious objects of design. However, uh, there are less obvious things too. For example, uh, there are things that are uh, underlying and you don't really 
see them. For example, a software um, I'm using to write a paragraph, uh, a circuit board on a computer, right? Uh, the way I have organized the books on my shelves uh, or the notice board uh, that you guys populate uh, in the office, right? Um, or where you've pinned up images, documents, lists, reminders. And of course, those images, documents, lists, and reminders themselves, right? Everything has designed. Some things uh, has been designed. Something is very obvious. Some things are very underlying and not so obvious. But everything has been designed. Things that are designed, um, it's a long list, right? And the, the windows, the um, the window opener, the desk light, all the examples that I gave are, are things that are very obvious. Things that um, that the office user has designed, this is not a long list. Uh, like, for example, the notice board, uh, the layout of the desk. These are things that you design on your own. You, you're not dependent on others, right? How you prepare uh, your workstation is up to you. How you've assembled icons on your desktop machine is completely your choice. Now, the third thing, which is things that are definitely not designed, although you can't see them uh, in a photograph, uh, you might have thought about things uh, through the window. Uh, for example, the sky, the birds, the, uh, the building opposite, et cetera, right? Uh, but essentially, they have a pattern always, right? Um, so there would be like thousands of things when you sit at your desk, you would notice, uh, which have some bit of design, either they are intentionally designed or you designed um, uh, without any intention just to make sure that they look proper in some way. And then there are things that are definitely not designed, but essentially they have a pattern. Most of the things I have around me have been designed by others. Some have been designed by me. And the layout of my room, for example, the way I organize my work, um, the, the Google Drive that I have, uh, um, that's my personal space, all of these are conscious decisions that I've taken, but essentially I was not really, I haven't really planned for them, but they have just happened, right? So then there are things that have been designed by designers. So you think of all of these uh, products and the brands, right? They have very, very uh, obvious things, which essentially is uh, what we call as a design element to it, right? They're not really things that would uh, would really be uh, designed for helping you do something, but they have been designed for the for the for the for for a brand perspective, right? Then there are things which are which is what we call as quiet or silent design, right? Um, so the designer design, which was the previous slide, something puts uh, people off engaging with design, right? It sometimes seems as if things have been given to us by designers, right? Uh, rather than being something we participated in. So all these branded things that we see, the, the purse brands and, and these monuments, right? They have been given to us by somebody. But the things that you see on this slide, for example, which we call as quite designed, is something that we are involved in. By this, I mean the kind of design that you and I might do in our personal space, right? These are things that quietly improve our lives without us realizing until we stop and think. A quiet design is much more prevalent than designer design uh, and impacts almost every aspect of our life. Um, think about this, uh, this circle here, right? The intersection. Um, this was designed by somebody, but it is so, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's so common that we don't even think that somebody ha must have thought about it uh, had, must have done so many iterations to come up with this, right? So a good example of quite design uh, could be um, Frank Blackmore, who had the idea of traffic roundabouts, which you see here. His design thinking affected the whole country, possibly the whole world. And yes, it's little known. Nobody has really observed it. Now, um, I've been talking about what design is, but I think we need to really understand and establish that it's a team sport. If design is something that is able to improve our lives and shape our behavior, it itself evidently originates from and involves people because we're talking about improving the lives, improving the experiences. 
in contrast to any activity like art, uh, which often um, um, in some ways involves only one person um, in its production. Uh, design usually involves a number of uh, people in several different roles. Uh, design then is something that is inherently social. Um, and we need to uh, really, I'm, I'm really emphasizing on the word social here. Um, or put another way, something that creates social and cultural value. Of course, uh, this value can come in a lot of different forms, um, ease and effectiveness and economic value and aesthetic value and functional and meaningful, et cetera, et cetera. But it creates a value. Uh, let's think about the number of people that, that might be involved in a design. Uh, first of all, we have the designer themselves. Most of, uh, for a moment, uh, we can assume that they are the fulcrum of the design process, but per perhaps there is more than one designer. There would be uh, a lot of people. There would be instructional designers, and there would be designers, and then there would be business people and the leadership team, and 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 so many other people who are involved in it, right? For anything that we've designed, so. Um, the role um, that these types of people play um, can often overlap. And especially for um, people who want to start with design, uh, it's the same person who's doing like multiple things. Generally, however, uh, this these will be different people and different groups uh, who are doing specific things uh, when we come up with something. So, uh, if you notice here on at the bottom, there is a there is a client uh, who we are designing for. There is a group of people who we call as designers, and all of us are designers here. And then there are consumers and makers, right? So the makers are the policy makers uh, in our sense, right? The consumers are the employees, and uh, and anyone who's part of designing a process, a policy, a tool, a system, a software. Uh, can be termed as a designer, right? So let's move forward a little bit and uh, let's summarize of whatever we saw so far, right? So design is all around us. It satisfied a specific need. Uh, it creates a value. It changes behavior and involves people. The last three bullet points are the ones that we would stress upon a little bit more than the first two here, because that is exactly what uh, we would be taking forward from here, right? Now we can we we looked at what design is, but what exactly is thinking, right? Uh, it's a way uh, of 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 doing things, right? Uh, I'm going to talk today about de what design thinking actually is, right? So I'm going to be talking about the history of design thinking and how it came about uh, of what it is and how it's different from some of the other tools and methods and frameworks that we use today. So let's dig a little bit on really uh, at a high level of what design thinking is. Popularized, popularized by the Design Institute uh, of Sanford, which is what, what's normally called as G School, and widely um, used to tackle problems from business to K-12 education to human resource to um, system design. Design thinking is a creative problem-solving process that focuses on understanding the needs of others rapidly creating solutions, testing them, iterating, and bringing out the creative genius within ourselves, right? So if you notice, there are these various diagrams. If you search um, on, a, on Google and try and look for images or the processes of what design thinking is all about, uh, you would see these results on the top, right? They're really a great way to kind of get into the overview of what design thinking is, because you uh, realize that you see these diagrams that look very much same at the core of them, but uh, essentially are the same concepts, which is uh, what design thinking framework is, right? The way to think about solving problem and uh, that are shifting from our view, from creating products from for business reasons, shifting it to thinking about solving real user needs and understanding what people's real problems are um is what this is based upon right so if you look at learning means design thinking process this is what it would look like which is exactly same as what you've seen in the past right in the previous slides so if you look at um the one of these diagrams where 
uh, they all look very similar. Design thinking process often has these five main steps, right? Starting from empathizing with people, with the uh, which is what uh, empathy is, empathizing step is all about, understanding their problems, defining the problem more concretely, ideating, coming up with multiple solutions that might work for the problem created, creating something uh, which is what we call as quick prototyping, uh, or uh, which we can also term as proof of concepts, right, uh, or possible solutions, and then testing them again with uh, the real users. So we've got the general process that um, that's all about doing these five steps and into these five stages or five phases, right? Um, but at the core, um, the thing uh, to see is that within each of these five steps, there are tons of flexible flexibility, right? So how would you empathize? There are like tens and thousands of processes that are available. Uh, there are so many tools that are available, and there are step-by-step -step guides and processes available, which we will, we will touch upon uh, in tomorrow's session, right? Uh, same goes with ideation, same goes with testing and prototyping and, and, and so on and so forth, right? So there are tons of things uh, that work, but essentially what we are trying to do is uh, look at things which would which work in our setup. If you think about learning mate, what works for us is what we're going to touch upon as tools and processes, right? Now, as far as the definition goes, um, Design thinking refers to a cognitive, strategic, practical process, uh, practical processes by which designing concepts like proposals of new products, ideas, um, policies, concepts, um, building new products, machines, etc., are developed by uh, a set of people, uh, which we call as design teams. Right. Um, it's not a cookbook. Uh, please keep that in mind. It's not really uh, a step-by-step -step process. Uh, it, of course, gives us a framework, but it is not really something that would tell us you have to do step one and exactly step two. It's iterative. It's it's a mishmash of things, and it, it comes back uh, and forth uh, from wherever you are at. So if you look at this, this is how design thinking looks like. Right? Although uh, the previous graphic might have showed design thinking as a a linear process. It's it is very practical uh, in its practice. It is clinical. All right. It's iterative. It's messy. Uh, the reason why it's non-linear is because throughout the process we are constantly crafting clarity by testing assumptions and squeezing out risks. Sometimes our um, sometimes an overtuned assumption uh, will require us to revisit empathy to learn more or um, a misscoped challenge might need to be narrowed down to open or opened up further to define what the real challenge is that we're trying to solve, right? So um, we're saying that design thinking is not a cookbook. Uh, there is a notion about design thinking that um, there are where the answers fall short out um, at the end, but the truth is it's messier than, that, than what we think about it. Right, so essentially, it was designed uh, somewhere in the 1960s, um, um, with with its foundations from psychology, computer science, anthropology, uh, human computer interaction, interaction design, instructional instructional design, and all of these different streams came together, and uh, then there was a format called as design thinking that came up. It was popularized by somebody called David Kelly. Um, uh, who's also founder of um, IDEO company. And uh, and then, of course, there are other important people like Don Norman, who was who's considered as as the father of usability and user experience. He uh, he and his partner created uh, this, these things around um, what design thinking is, how we should use it. All right. <coughs> The first thing that um, we can think of in this framework is people. And uh, the, the first thing that we need to keep in mind is to have a be beginner's mindset. Um, some of us have worked in the industry for 10, 15, 20, or, or more than that years in, 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 
in the professional lives, right? And somewhere we get biased and we say that we know things, but essentially design thinking is exactly opposite that. To people who have never dealt with design thinking often ask for simple analogies to help envision it better. We have had good experiences with talking to these people uh, on an imaginary trip uh, to their childhood, especially at the age of four or five, all children have something in common. They ask questions, right? Uh, which is what uh, one of the foundations of design thinking is all about, right? In order to learn and understand situations, uh, we keep our experiences uh, that we have had from the past on a side, but we ask more questions. We try and learn um, from doing things. We try and learn from people what they are exactly going through, what their problems are, uh, rather than assuming. So it's all about having a beginner's mindset. We want to encourage people to ask questions as though we didn't have the slightest idea as to their answers. Like an alien from the outer space, we set foot on Earth for the first time and ask him, ask ourselves why we throw plastic into the oceans, right? It's, it's a very normal thing, but we, we don't really think about it. Work during the day and sleep at night, right? Why do we work at, in, during the day and sleep at night? Again, it's, it's a common thing. Everyone does that, and so do we. But we, if, we, if you think about it as somebody who, hasn't, uh, who has no baggage, who has no biases, you would ask these questions. Essentially, design thinking is all about thinking as if you're going uh, with a plain slate and you're asking questions in order to understand things better. So if your mindset is unprejudiced, it's open to everything in the beginner's mind. There are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are only a few. And that's what we try to um, uh, get rid of during uh, using design thinking, right? So the beginner's mind set or the attitude is free of prejudices. Uh, it's all about um, freeing ourselves from expectations about what will happen, filled with curiosity and understand things more deeply, open with the world of possibilities. Since we do not yet know at the beginning of our journey what the possible solutions could be and what is not. It's all about failing early and often and learn quickly, right? Um, so there's this famous quote, you know nothing, John Snow, and that is what beginner's mindset is all about, right? So from uh, coming from I know, um, I think I wonder and I don't know, and I want to know more is the attitude that helps us implement design thinking in its true sense. <coughs> it helps us bid farewell to prejudices of how things work, right? Uh, we put up put aside our expectations about what will happen when we design something. We strengthen our curiosity to understand facts and problems in depth. We open ourselves uh, for new possibilities. We ask simple questions. Um, maybe people think of us as, um, as people who have no idea about what they're getting into, but essentially we un uncover things which uh, nobody else can think about. Um, right, so you might look like uh, novices at the beginning, but essentially you're uncovering things, trying to um, keep your prejudices on the side. And we try things out and learn from it. So in practice, design thinking, uh, it is very much like learning how you ride a bike, right? You can learn about biking, but until you sit on the bike, you fall, you get back up, again, you won't develop the muscle memory, right? So design thinking is all about practicing, failing, learning again and again. Likewise, until you practice these methods that we're going to talk about in, in the next session, you won't experience um, the difference between just following the script versus embodying uh, the hard to observe yet critical mindsets um, required for successful de successfully developing a practice of design thinking. Um, the mindsets that are not mutually exclusive and many overlap with each other. Uh, there are things which we will touch upon, like focused on people. That's the first mindset that um, that 
that uh, that that design thinking offers, right? We focus on human beings, uh, build empathy, uh, and are mindful when exploring his or her needs. Uh, people with their needs, possibilities, experiences, and knowledge are the starting point for all considerations. The next one is driven by curiosity. And I talked about the bigness mindset. When we are curious, we are open, we ask questions continuously and change the perspective in order to look at the things from various sides or various angles. In design thinking, it is of crucial importance to understand what we work on, what the greater vision ought to be pursued. In order to find a solution, the team must have internalized the problem and have understood it in depth. So essentially creating awareness about the problem that we're trying to solve and being open, is it's all about that. One of the big things that we've seen work at LearningMate and, it, and, and at, with, with various customers that I've worked with is that it always helps to have interdisciplinary teams uh, while designing something. Uh, in some of the processes that we have designed and collaborated with uh, the HR teams in the past, the things that we have, we've seen that had interdisciplinary teams where people from various departments came in and collaborated and tried to define something, it really helped and it really worked. So collaborating on teams um, where people come from various walks of life, various departments, um, right, uh, and from various teams uh, is vital for the holistic consideration of problem solving. The team members with varying skills and specialist knowledge help in creative process and reflection upon ideas. Experiment and iterate uh, is again one of the big things around design thinking where we continuously experiment on, on things and we try and iterate and learn from uh, whatever we have designed. We are we have to be mindful of the process so, ja so, so that we don't really get into the, the circle of continuously just iterating and designing, but also somewhere we have to come out and implement things, right? So understanding the process itself is very, very critical. Visualization and presentations are the key aspects of what you're thinking and how do you present it to the larger forum. Uh, keep uh, the biases towards action, which and which essentially means that it is not based on lengthy considerations by somebody who sits alone behind the closed doors. Instead, it lives from doing. So there is no one person who decides something. It's a team effort where the biases are kept on the side. Um, and of course, we have to embrace complexity, uh, and we we need to understand that we explore. The key to complex systems accept uncertainty and the fact that complex system problems demand complex solutions and it would be difficult to come up with the right solutions. All right, so I mean, in all the previous slides, we just talked about what the what design what design is, what design thinking is, uh, what are its mindsets, what are the things that we're going what what the framework looks like. Essentially, uh, in summary, there is no linear way of tackling design problems. It's a solution-based approach, which is based on um, curiosity and iteration, right? It's a non-traditional way of coming up with a solution, uh, which is, which, which is hands-on, which means that you need to be involved in the process rather than handing it over to somebody who's going to create it for you. It is immersive which essentially means that uh, you have you you live uh, you live the process and you be part of it it brings together observations analysis research to make design work for people and as we started it it start it it is centered with the user in in uh, which means it is user centered at the core are the are the wants and the needs of the customers or the users <laughs> which essentially means that it revolves around what works best for the people and understand the pain points and their motivations around it. Empathy, of course, is the secret weapon where it all starts. Uh, you need to understand and share the feelings of the other people, and that's that's the starting point for design thinking, right? Now, 
what does it mean for the HR team, right? Design thinking has now more than ever has a newfound relevance in different industries, including the human resource industry. It is especially important for people uh, like you because it because all the principles of design thinking in essence are human centric since hr primarily handles recruitment employment experience exit processes of employees and represents the company understanding human needs and execution accordingly becomes crucial in case of hr design thinking focuses on building a structure a design of operations which would align the goal of the company with its employees. It starts by building the problem statement to find what, find out ways of resolving that. Our fast-paced work environment today demands quick solutions, and therein lies the challenge: humans. Right? How do we design something which would help with human, uh, which would which would help humans? Right. Unlike the machines, uh, humans, after all, not engineered to deliver automated, accurate results around the clock. Innovation is the only way to meet this challenge, and design thinking is capable of driving that innovation. Tim Brown, one of the pioneers of design thinking, believes that leading through questions, which is what I've stressed so far in, I, in this presentation, is the best way to drive innovation. Questions bring us closer to stakeholder requirements and help us understand the scope of improvement. Some of the things that it would really help um, as the aspects in HR with design thinking is human resource planning. HR planning involves recruiting, selecting, hiring, and training the right candidates to make them ready for the job. This is one of the critical processes for any company since, it's, since it builds assets for them. Design thinking can optimize this process by incorporating a few of the principles. Empathy can help recruiters to create a welcoming environment for the new recruits at the company. Uh, constant questions for both parties, namely the hiring company and the candidate seeking the job opportunity, can set can help set expectations empathy will also help the hr team to identify the inherent challenges and address them ideation another cru crucial step in design thinking encourages users to be creative and think of new ways to address uh, the issue this step is key to innovation hr teams must be willing to ditch conventional approaches and breaking through barriers uh, breaking the thought barriers, rather, uh, to come up with new solutions and drive innovation in recruitment policies. Uh, these efforts will go into creative, uh, conducive environment uh, for onboarding, training the new employees. The next big thing would be performance management, uh, which aims at recognizing the meaningful work that employees do and rewarding uh, them appropriately. Employees often complain about not being lauded uh, for their contribution and HR departments themselves often struggle with the ways of gauging performance, right? Um, an employee worked for a project manager and a project manager worked for a delivery manager and the project got shot or they, they were released from a project and all of those things we've heard so many times, right? But essentially, did that employee get rewarded uh, for their performance is what is something that we can um, define with, with performance management, right? Designing, design thinking might, be, uh, might make this process more effective by using tools and surveys in connecting and empathizing with the employees and understanding their concerns and expectations. Uh, we have tried to automate the performance management system at LearningMade. Uh, sometime back, uh, and that might even find might might get fine tuned even further, um, and help managers stay updated with the performance uh, of their team and evaluate them accurately. 
the relationship management, of course, imply to employer, employer to employee man, uh, relationship. Uh, HR plays an important role uh, for maintaining that harmonious relationship um, between both these parties. And as often uh, with business organizations, the communication between employees and employers are, uh, are not very well structured. Uh, we've improved a lot in the last few years, but um, a proper communication channel can lead to various, an improper one can lead to various issues. Um, and we all know, uh, we all understand about that, right? The the HR team ensures that both parties remain well connected, act the communi and act as communication enablers between them. Design thinking can enhance this process uh, with an empathy driven uh, approach towards issues that concern both parties. Using design thinking methods, the teams can evaluate the situation and come up with situations, uh, come up come up with uh, <laughs> solutions that appease them equally. Compensation benefits um, can also be uh, something that we can uh, think about or where um, are we giving uh, the right compensations to and benefits to the employees in, in the structured way, right from the time the candidate joins the company, gets promoted uh, to the time he quits and retires, the HR department reviews and updates his or her compensation continuously. Design thinking methods can help HR teams to understand the requirements, expectations um, of the employees and budgets of the employers and optimize the compensation accordingly. Even while designing policies, empathy-driven approach can help formulate policies that meet the need of the employees and truly benefit them. One of the other big things is the employee life cycle, where we draw the whole life cycle of an employee uh, from the day we connect with him uh, for recruitment uh, for the first time till the day he leaves. This whole thing can be mapped out into more like a life cycle or a journey. And all the uh, low hanging fruits can be, uh, can be mapped out, which would give us a good point of view in terms of what the life cycle is all about and where are these challenges that we can actively address. And of course, value proposition is again a big piece in this, where are we really helping uh, propose the right uh, value proposition of from a company's perspective to the employees? And is there, an, is there, a, is there a way to improve that even further? <laughs> Before we look at the different stages of design thinking framework, which we would look at, in a subsequent session. Um, let's look at the five uh, key principles um, that are pivotal to design thinking for the human resource department. User centricity, um, as we all understand it, that it all revolves around the people. Uh, collaboration, of course, I mentioned that while designing new policies, framework, uh, processes, right? Uh, Collaboration is the key where we involve uh, not just purists, but also a generalist from various teams at learning mate and involve them in helping them build something for us, which is where collaboration comes in as a key. Ideation is really coming up with the ideas to solve the, the problems. And of course, experimenting it with a smaller uh, set of people, which is we normally call as alpha testing or beta testing, where we roll out some of these new ideas and uh, proof of concepts with a smaller team and see how they react to it before we really put that in action. And of course, uh, action is really implementing it, all of it together, right? <laughs> so these are these five things that we would address in our next session and look at some of the tools which could be applied in order to uh, use these principles uh, or these uh, key principles that would uh, be applicable to the HR uh, department. Uh, and to summarize, design thinking is all about doing. Like I said, it is immersive and we need to be part of the whole thing. Um, in the next session, we will be, um, it will be all about understanding, uh, empathizing, probing, interviewing processes, trying to use the tools for ideating, collaborating, 
and of course testing with a smaller peop, uh, set of people like i said uh, essentially look at the tools that we can incorporate in our day-to-day -day lives in order to design something new so that's something that we would do in the next session uh, today was all about looking at the framework when it when was it designed and how does it look like right um, that's where i would end today's session uh, when we meet uh, in the next session uh, which is the, the final one we look at some of the tools i will share some templates with you once we um, complete the session um, and you can use some of those templates and, and use them in your day-to-day -day lives right uh, I've been talking for too long. Are there any questions, any suggestions from you guys? Anyone? Uh, Gaurav, is there some links that we can go through, read kind of a little bit about uh, design thinking? Is there a case study that we can go through before we join the next session? Yes, there are. There are um, there are these um, processes and tools that we have designed internally at right. Learning Made with the Design Council, and I'll share all of them. Uh, but before you come in for the next session, I'll share something so that you can have a look at them as well. Yes, that that would be great. Thank you so much. All right, that's where I end today's session. Um, uh, Bonia, over to you. Um, thanks, Gaurav. This was uh, really nice. Uh, and we got to know a lot of new things, especially, uh, you know, from the HR perspective. Uh, I mean, not a lot of focus was on HR, at least in this session. Hopefully, next session, we will uh, get to know uh, specifically focused on the HR. But at least on this session, uh, we got to know a lot about design thinking, you know, strategies and things like that, especially, you know, quiet design and all of that. So uh, some new, uh, you know, terms and things uh, that I think most of us uh, were not aware about. So thanks for all of that. Um, and I look forward to the next session. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Gaurav, and everyone else as well. Parmita, anything else that we want to do? No, nothing. Uh, that's all. If anyone have any question, please ask. Yes. Or, yeah. Sorry, Gaurav, you were saying something. I interrupted you, I think. No, I was just saying thank you. Yeah. Uh, any questions from anyone?